Welcome to Advent Devotions at St. Philip the Deacon. This is the reading for the fourth Sunday of Advent called, Let It Be With Me According to Your Word. And as you may remember, the Sunday devotions are a bit longer as they introduce the following week. Grun writes, The fourth Advent Sunday places Mary once again in the center of the story. The evangelist Matthew tells us how, from Joseph's vantage point, we might consider Jesus' birth since he himself was confused by this startling news. A dream came to him, helping him come to terms with it. It revealed to him that Mary, his betrothed, was to bear a child who would free people from their sin. This child, he came to discover, was to be called Emmanuel, a name that means God with us. Christ desires to be born in each of us as well, but for this new birth to happen in our hearts, we need what Mary and Joseph had. We need the motherly womb of Mary in which God's word, Jesus, took flesh. For like Mary, we must also learn to take God's word into our lives in faith so that this word might take form within us. But we also need Joseph, who listened to his dreams. For in our dreams, God often shows us what he hopes to do in our lives. He wants to show us that he's not merely a God who is far off, but one who lives within us, filling our hearts with his light and love. Joseph also stands for the protection we must foster for the receptivity of the feminine side, represented by Mary, a dimension each of us carries within our hearts. We need a measure of Joseph's strength to find the discipline we need to do what God asks of us so that God can grow within us and shape our lives completely. Luke tells us the story of the angel's annunciation to Mary, but God sends us angels as well to tell us what he intends for us. Such an angel could come to us in the form of another person offering us guidance in our lives. But an angel might also come to us in a dream, showing us the next steps we should take. As modern people, we often doubt the notion of angels or overlook those whom God sends our way. But Mary opened herself to the angel who came to her. And though she initially feared what this messenger shared with her, she went on to ponder in her heart what it all could have meant. She thought about how the angel's promise could become a concrete reality in her life. She didn't simply want to believe, but rather wanted to understand what she believed. When the angels to angel told her that the Holy Spirit would come over her, and that for God nothing was impossible, she answered, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. This is a confident response. Here, Mary doesn't diminish herself in speaking of herself as a servant. She's not one who simply says yes and let it be so to every request made of her. Rather, she's a woman who represents Israel, speaking her yes to God on behalf of Israel. Through it all, she trusts in God's promises despite how strange they might have seemed to her. For in the face of Israel's disobedience, Mary opened her life to God and came to embody an obedient Israel. From her, we learn to say yes to what God entrusts with us. We shouldn't belittle ourselves here, for God intends to do great things in our lives. He desires to be born within us as well. For when we trust God's will for our lives, the unique and special image God has of us will become stronger and clearer. But this requires that we learn to open ourselves with all our strength to receive God's word, to take it into our lives so that his word might also become flesh in our lives. Luke tells another wonderful story about Mary when he describes her encounter with Elizabeth. 
He tells of how Mary set out to cross the mountains, refusing to stay at home. She carried Christ with her to the people, going to meet her cousin Elizabeth, who was also pregnant. This is a marvelous story, one that reveals the mystery of this encounter to us. When we open ourselves to others in our lives, by overcoming our prejudices or projections, when we truly come to meet them where they live, only then is a true encounter possible that is capable of changing us both. For Elizabeth, this experience came when the child leaped for joy in her womb, as Luke describes it. In that moment, the child came to life within her, and she came to know her inner child realizing her own unique and original identity. She was filled with the Holy Spirit, as the Gospel puts it. In an encounter just like this, where we desire nothing from the other, but simply want to be open for them and receive the secret they hold, we also come to experience the Holy Spirit. Through the Spirit, Elizabeth recognized who Mary was that she was the mother of her Lord. But this is true for every human encounter. We too might encounter the Lord in every person we meet, for each of them is the mother of Christ. This is not only true for those we've known for a long time. It's not only true of friends we know well. No, every face shines for us with the face of God. But a true encounter is only possible when we reflect on the mystery of the other, when we, with Elizabeth, find ourselves filled with wonder that the mother of our Lord should also come to us. Elizabeth blesses Mary and speaks well of her. Blessed are you among women, she says, which we could understand to mean, Mary, you are touched by God, loved by God. Your fruitfulness and aliveness are gifts of God. And Elizabeth calls Mary blessed. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Mary is the true image of faith, of one who has been redeemed. This saying is true for us as well. We too are blessed, and like Mary, we are able to bless others. For when we trust the word of God as Mary did, which also promises us great things, we come to experience faith as a source of great gladness. The fourth Sunday in Advent points us ahead to Christmas. We'll meet many people and experience this celebration with our families. But it's not necessarily the case that our family and friends will encounter each other without prejudices getting in the way. It may not happen that we'll be open enough to see Christ in each other and so bless and cherish one another. Why is this so difficult? One reason for this is that we're often driven by our need to measure ourselves against others. We try to figure out who's more successful or who's better off, and we often devalue others in order to inflate our own ego. In fact, at no other time of year are there as many fights as there are at Christmas? Sometimes things go so far that we're not capable of experiencing each other for who we truly are. We can't begin to enter into this celebration, which after all, is all about true encounter, about discovering the mystery present within the other. As Chris, at Christmas, we are invited to ponder the mystery we see in the manger when we gaze upon the divine child lying there before us. But at that very moment, we should also remember to look at the people around us. Like Elizabeth, we should learn to see members of our family with the eyes of faith, with eyes opened by the Holy Spirit. Only then are we able to see in all those gathered around us, not simply our relatives or friends and acquaintances, but in each and every one, the presence of Mary, who is to bear Christ. Only then can we see in them the mother of our Lord coming to visit us, 
so that the child within us might also leap for joy. Only then might we come in touch again with the inner child we carry within us, with our true self, with Christ, who desires to be born in us. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.